Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, we will start with the past. Um, so I have plugged in my tablet now, and I will start with the uh, with moving some polygons around and and show you my process and how I go about creating the the head. So before I do that, I want to show you. Uh, what I collected before. So I'll just move this here a bit so you can see it. So this is a software called Pure Ref, and I use it for collecting references, which is very important when you uh, work in 3D. So you need to uh, use something as a reference uh, to look at to know what you're doing with your sculpt and your model. So now, since we are working on a on a head, I have collected some references from heads here, male and female, some uh, pictures of the concept that I want to try to make. So this is a character from a game called Forge of Empires from Inno Games. It's a mobile game. And this is uh, just some pictures I took from the uh, from their commercials and from the um, game pictures in general, like posters and marketing materials and whatnot. Uh, I also have, if we have time to um, paint the colors later on, I will use this as a reference for painting the skin. have some more examples here, some body references in case we do the full body, but I think we will not. Some topology references, and this is what I will start with. <coughs> so I like to start rough with my um, head modeling, with my head sculpting. I want to start with the general head planes, and then after I have that, I convert that into uh, the character I'm working on. So I will start with something like this something like this with head planes and then move on to doing this. So I will not move on to this directly. Okay, so I will move this on my other screen now. All right. So what I like to do is change this material. I don't like this uh, red uh, wax material so much. I usually work either with, uh, mm, where is it? There is a skin, it's called material. This one, poly skin or I work with the matcap gray. These are the two materials I use the most, the most. But I do recommend um, when you sculpt to change materials because different materials have uh, different properties and they can show some flaws in your model and help you sculpt. So, uh, what I'd like to do from the beginning is, uh, so I start with a sphere, then I convert this to a polymesh 3D, and I immediately start with dynameshing. This is a bit too high, let's go 
64, for example. Okay. And I start with the rough planes of the of the head. So basically I'm making a rough sketch of the skull. So I'm masking this. And then I use the transform. To get this effect. Dynamesh that. Oh wait, sorry. Okay, so this this is our front uh, view. So I want to keep the front view, and I'll just do this from the side view now. I don't want to mess with the with that. So I'm you now. I'm making the front side of the, of the skull. Then I will shrink this in a bit. That's too much. And now I will use the H polish brush, which will basically make this straight. More like a straight plane. reset these brushes because I changed some settings on them. Okay, that's better. Then I can smooth that out. I think I went a bit too far, so I'm using the move brush to bring this in a bit. I'm going to mask uh, the bottom here, I'm going to mask a circle and then extrude using the transpose tool a neck. This is just a placeholder for now, just to have something, something there. I'm just using the move brush, just make more space here. Okay, I'll just clip that quickly with the clip curve. And I'll leave that be for now, so I can start working on the, on the head. So I'm using now, I'm looking at some of these references that we that I showed before the planar heads and I'll start moving these shapes in a bit Using the move brush here, I'll just trim that a little bit. Then we can make a rough nose here. Let me just check. Alright, so I will make a nose placeholder. Then here I will mark the ears. So the bottom of the ear should be 
on the same line with the tip of the nose. Alright, so I feel this chin is a bit too low, I'll put it up, and for the eyes, I will make holes inside by using either the inflate or just the clay tubes inverted, or clay, or push it in with the move brush. just mark the mouth here because we're going stylized and making this slightly bigger here because in stylized characters that forehead is is bigger. This is also important to look at the model from different angles to make sure it's okay from all angles. All right, and then we can start with making some planes. So I will take the H polish brush here, I will mark this skull bone, that's planar right there. Use this one as a reference. It is also important to have perspective turned on and switch between perspective and orthographic view. For this one, I'll just change my perspective to 30 because that's more accurate to real life perspective. Making some more planes here. Let's just plane this out as well. Do the mouth afterwards. And making some space for the chin there. Using the clay build up for the nose. Smoothing that out a bit. Here, using the trim because there is an edge there, but it's not so harsh. I'll use now the damp standard just to make this line here and then clay build up to fill it in all 
I'm going to move the ear section back because it's more this way. Trim some of that. Then let's just put the eye sockets, uh, the eyes right away. Just move that, it's bothering me. So let's put some eyes in there. Uh, we can do that by going geometry. No subtool, append. We can append the sphere. Let's just save that quickly. Um, okay, so eyes. For the eyes, I want to use this sphere. Just rotate it, rotate it 90 degrees, scale it down. So I'm using the scale with the transform with the transpose tool, and just place it in there. And once we put that there, it can help us uh, with the overview of the proportions and it can help us um, work with the other proportions um, more easily. Um, I have a shortcut here on my interface to mirror that. So when you mirror, it goes from one axis to the other. And we can also mirror and weld. Oh, why doesn't that work? Ah, I needed to mirror it first. Then mirror and weld. Okay, so now we have the eye sockets, the eyes there. I'm going to switch to the other main head subtool and move these polygons around the eye. Let me just check my reference again. All right. Then we, what we will do is I'm going to take these eyes, solo them out. Mm, I will duplicate them, so we create the eye sockets from that. I will enable symmetries here, so what I do on one tool applies to the other. And then we can scale this, but enable local symmetry. So then, so I'm using uh, Shift F for this. So to look at the wireframe, then we dynamesh this. So now we're working on the eye sockets. Uh, 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 geometry, yes, dynamesh, and then. We will slice this slice curve. So we slice that. So we have two different polygroups, which will enable us we 
which will enable us to separate these from each other, the upper and lower part. Let me just erase this part, the other one, because then we will just mirror it. So I will hide this side and delete hidden. So now we can only work on this side. Select only this polygroup, control, shift, click on it, and then split hidden. So now this is a separate object. You see, now I can move this separately. And this, I will now dynamesh. I can give it a more resolution. And we select this, and we also dynamesh that one. So now you see what we achieved. Now we can move these independently, and they will be our eye sockets. So I will <laughs> yes, I will activate this um, transparency, so I can see the eye socket inside. So I can set the axis here, so I can rotate it easily. And I'll do the same with this one. Rotating it just like that. And then we can bring them closer. Make some space to see this, what we're doing. So let's dynamesh one more time after these changes. I will mirror, mirror and weld. I know that doesn't work. Hmm, why doesn't that work? Ah, because local symmetry is on. Okay, mirror, mirror and weld, and do the same for this. Mirror, mirror and weld. So now we have some eye sockets there for our eyes. All right. Let's do some more Trimming here, Some more build up. What I will also do is for Dynamesh, I will enable Polish, so it gives us this uh, effect, and now we really see uh, nice planers on the on the head that we can work with. And now I will start with the mouth. Let's just save that. So for the mouth, what I like to do is I, well, there's different techniques, but let's, let's try this one. Let's add some resolution here. We will need more resolution for this. Hmm. All right. 
navel project so it can keep the form better after the dynamesh. I'm gonna mask this. And then um, unblur the mask. That's a bit high. Try like that. And then move this in a bit like that. Hmm. No. Let's try something else. And let's use the damp standard, or better yet, the slash. To make that hole, can mask this and then do the lips here, just form them with the clay, build up, and the uh, damp standard, and then just add more volume here to it and because there's a volume there in the lips coming from the bottom of the nose shape that better with the damp standard Now trim this with the trim dynamic. Let's trim this whole thing. Smooth. Trim also here. And for the lower lip, let's just do something like this shape. Add some volume there. Repeat. And add volume on the side. there and from there we can redo this with the damn standard let's see it from the side so let's move these around a bit Resolution is too high, let's decrease it a bit. So here on the side I will do some trimming now to fix this. To create this plane. Here we want to have a line like this, uh, going something like this, from the tip of the nose, the upper lip, the lower lip, and then the chin. Usually humans have this kind of order. Let's give this a 
bit more distance here. Not enough polish for now. And do that again. So that's starting to look normal now. Increase the resolution a bit. Moving here. I oh, know, wait, that's too much resolution. Sorry, that was an accident. Add some volume. Can even use the pinch here, actually. The pinch is nice for lips. The pinch brush essentially uh, takes geometry and smashes it together from both sides. So from the topology here you can see what happens when I pinch. You see? And that's, that works well for the lips. Formed it in a bit more. Trim this here. <laughs> Let's give a better shape to these lips. Okay. And now on this one. Let's see how it is from the top. Push it in a bit more. Add some volume there. Okay. It's a bit too close to the mouth, so I'll just move it down a bit. Mask it and move it down. Like that. And let's work on proportions a little bit now again. So let's look at it from the side. This needs to go in a bit like that. This as well. Let's see perspective view. Let's do some trimming here. Let's move this in a bit. 
Internal symmetry, so it affects both sides. Here, in this one, I'll just do pop it out a bit so we have a more. You see that it's subtle, but it gives an idea about the eyes. And now we can sculpt in, we can use the inflate, or better yet, the clay tubes or clay, and sculpt in some meat here, some muscle, some fat. This will go around the eye. Here we can add some more because there's a bone there that gives that shape. Push that in. Do some more trimming here. Let's look at this. Okay, there is too much roundness here. Can fix it like that. Push that in, also here, and the eyes, the ears, can also go like that. Oh, went too far. Let's mask. using the damp standard just to roughly make some shapes there and the clay tubes inverted here at my reference and I'm just using different brushes to to come up with something that looks similar, something that makes sense to me. I think this is too high poly now. I will bring down the resolution a bit. Because when the resolution is lower, you can more easily manipulate things and change and move them around. Okay, that's that's 
enough for the ear. So what, how I prefer to work is um, I like to move from different sections to other ones on the head. and work like that because I can get bored pretty fast if I work only on one so for me that is that works nice just switching quickly from one side to the other let's make just the shoulders here There is a muscle going from the back of the ear down. Let's just rough this out like this. And then clip again, like we did before. This is still too high poly. I will go 120. Inflate, clip, and Dynamesh. So Dynamesh works if you click Control, having the mask pen, and then just pull on the side on the canvas. That does a Dynamesh. Adding some volume here. Let's add some volume here. And do that muscle so it goes like this. To the collarbone, to the clavicle. that again with that straight and let's just fix this as well here let's look at it from the sides
Okay. From that, if it's too prominent, I don't want it to be prominent. I mean, I'm not trying to finalize it now, I just wanted to have an idea, like a hint for it here. Alternating between my different tools, between my different uh, brushes. So I'm trimming with the trim dynamic. You can find all of them in the brush panel. I just said shortcuts for them, and I recommend that you do that too. So the damp standard, the move, damp standard is, you remember, the one we use for lips. The move to move things around, clay and clay build up, similar doing this effect. The trim to trim parts of the mesh, inflate, pinching also we use it for the lips. We can use it here as well to pinch this a bit. What else do we have? The standard, which is kind of like, kind of like clay. It's used for building up parts of the mesh. And those are the brushes I use mainly. I rarely touch other ones. So let's work on the nose. A little bit. Here I'll just make this, push this in a bit. Sorry, these tips are bothering me. Let's do another polish then. So we said we work on the nose. Let's just look at some reference for the nose. Mm -mm -mm, which one to use? Let's try this one. So I'm choosing uh, one of the reference 
images that I showed you before. Sorry, I said we work on, on the nose, but I'm just noticing things that I cannot resist to change. I mean, we will come back to all of these things afterwards when we start getting, when we start detailing more. But it's just too distracting, and when it's too distracting, it's just better to go and change it. it in with the damn standard and also try with the clay tubes to go deeper oh no actually I'm gonna do the inflate on the opposite side yeah I'm going to use the H polish here.
check this reference. All right. And I'll just do a quick rough, some quick rough lines for the nose. And we'll call it a day. Make these holes here. I'm just pushing inside with the move. Then let's fix some of these shapes. a common mistake people do. So I'm gonna push that in as well, just like that. So it goes together. Together it goes straight down from there. Smoothen that out. Let's do this space here. Trim the outside geometry that we just received from that. So because we did a lot of uh, Dynamesh with Polish enabled, we lost some of the detail that we did on the lips, but that's okay. We can bring it back later. Let me just see one on the side here. So we're missing this plane here. There is a line like this, so it's too straight now need to fix that and we can do that with the trim dynamic So I'll bring it back with the clay. All right. Dip 
open those up. More volume here. this a day a little bit Let's touch lips again so in the lips there is this hole here I don't know how it's called anatomically I know it has a name and then from there ZBrush broke. That's good. Good timing. 
Um, because I was about to call it a day. Let's just see what got saved last. So that's a lesson for you guys. Always save. Your project. This is the last autosave we got. Okay. Well, that's not too bad. So enable autosave, uh, quicker autosave iterations, or do or save your projects more often to avoid something like this, but I'm happy that this got saved at least, so we can continue from here the next time. We didn't lose too much. I'll just save it like that. What did I save here? Oh, this is old. Yeah, I should save more often. Okay, the quick save saved me. That's right. This is uh, this is good starting point for the next video. All right. So that was it for today, and in the next video we will continue with more details for the generic phase. See how far we can push it, and then afterwards we will start with our concept, which was this one. Let me remind you once again, this one. We will see how we can get these shapes here. All right, have a nice day guys, and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.